Hey, so um, this is Ben Kranz, and I'm presenting on BPC-157 and angiogenesis. Um, so we'll jump right in. So um, angiogenesis is the growth of new blood vessels from existing vasculature. Um, so this is important for tissues, as every metabolically active tissue is no further than a few hundred micrometers from a blood capillary. Um, so this has been shown to be very important for the recovery from an ischema. Um, as we age, the risk of having an ischema doubles every 10 years after turning uh, 55. Uh, so also important for heart health because it keeps the balance between the cardiovascular tissue and the blood vessels um, because the unbalance can attribute to a higher risk of heart failure. Um, so our figure here is just showing uh, kind of how an ischema happens. Um, and so we see the buildup of plaque, it ruptures, and then the clot forms limiting blood flow in the brain. Um, so the pathway for angiogenesis, as we can see in this figure here, is um, pretty complicated, but um, you know, there are a few important pieces that BPC-157 influences. So researchers have found that as we age, there is a drop in PCG1-alpha, HIF1-alpha, and ENOS activity. Um, so HIF1-alpha and PCG1-alpha promote uh, VEGF, which is... Uh, the vascular endothelial growth factor. Um, so that's, you know, pretty important as we can see on this graph here for angiogenesis. Um, and ENOS is important because it produces nitric oxide, which directly activates not, uh, angiogenesis. Um, so as we age, uh, it uncouples with tetrahydrobiopert uh, so, you know, we want to er, pretty much upregulate the ENOS and, uh, you know, cause angi angiogenesis through the uh, nitric oxide pathway. Um, so, yeah, so that can be done with BPC-157. Um, so, yeah. Um, so... Um, one researcher found that there's an increase in angiogenesis that received BPC-157 in mouse models who had musculoskeletal injuries. Um, they found that there's an upregulation in VEGF, CD34, and VF3. Uh, VEGF has a direct effect of upregulating angiogenesis by increasing ENOS and therefore nitric oxide, like we talked before. Um, CD34 and VF3 indicate the formation of endothelial cells, um, which are, of course, a part of the capillaries um, of angiogenesis. Um, and here's a figure here showing that, um, you know, of this figure, day one, these are rats had, I think, crushed tendons. Um, and we see the solid line is rats treated with... Um, uh, the BPC-157 and the dotted line was the control. So we see right after the um, injury was sustained, we saw a higher level of VF3, CD34, and VEGF um, in the rats. And then we interestingly see it drop off. So, um, you know, the researchers observed that it dropped off once the uh, tissue started to become fully healed. Um, which is actually really interesting and, you know, could be protective towards the vascular um, health um, and cardiovascular health of the organism because too much angiogenesis can cause an unbalance and, like we uh, talked about earlier, it could cause heart failure. Um, so uses for aging, um, it could help in aging by increasing the rate of healing of tendons and muscles. Um, so again, could be used, you know, after surgery um, or uh, after some sort of, you know, traumatic injury. Um, 
And this could also be helpful in aging population bounce back from those tendons and muscle injuries. Also could be helpful for stroke patients and recovery. Um, so as we see, you know, BPC-157 has a wide range of effects on the body um, and can be used for the aging populations with, you know, just traumatic injuries that they sustain um, or upregulating angiogenesis if needed um, in the body. So thank you guys for watching.